Howdy folks, in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving this neat recursive identity for binomial coefficients. The number of ways we can choose k objects from a collection of n objects is equal to the number of ways we can choose k objects from a collection of n minus 1 objects plus the number of ways we can choose k minus 1 objects from a collection of n minus 1 objects. So this gives us a way to calculate a binomial coefficient with some particular n value as a sum of binomial coefficients with the previous n value, n minus 1. Now we might want to specify our typical restrictions on n and k, so we might say that n has to be greater than or equal to 0, and k can range from 0 to n inclusive. In the case that k equals n, we can still say that this identity holds because we'll have n choose n, which is 1, is equal to n minus 1 choose n. There's zero ways to select n objects from n minus 1 objects, so that would be 0. And then this would be n minus 1 choose n minus 1, which is 1, so we'd have 1 equals 1. Everything would be dandy. Now, if you have written out Pascal's triangle before, whether or not you know it, you are very familiar with this equality, even though, you know, you might not recognize it. Because if we start to write out Pascal's triangle, this is, we're using this to write out these numbers. It's more apparent if we go down a few rows. So let's go down a few rows into the triangle. And how do we calculate the next row? Well, we first we add up 1 and nothing, which is 1. Then we add up these two numbers. They add to 4. Then we add up these two numbers. They add to 6. Then we add up these two numbers. They add to 4. 1 and nothing is just 1. So look at this. Just for example, 4 choose 2 is 6. And we found it by adding 3 choose 2 plus 3 choose 2 minus 1, which is 3 choose 1. So that's how we calculate the binomial coefficients when we're writing out Pascal's triangle like this. We use this identity whether we know it or not. So pretty cool. So we might as well go ahead and prove it since you clicked on the video and that's what I promised. Let's prove it. Can be proven pretty easily by separating our total count, our total number of n choose k, separating it into two separate counts. So let's consider just a generic object, uh, a, a generic set of n objects, excuse me. So a1, a2, and so on, up through some nth object a n. So we're considering the number of ways we can select k elements from this n element set. Now, if we're going to get the identity we want to pop out, we're going to have to find some way to count the number of ways of selecting k objects from n objects, but somehow reduce our total number of options to n minus 1. So how could we do that? We could do it by separating the total count based on the number of collections that do and don't include a particular element. So we can basically fix an element to either be included or not be included, and that's gonna turn out to work just fine. So what exactly do I mean? Well, again, we're considering the number of k element subsets that we can make from this n element set. Let's separate those collections of k objects or k elements. Let's separate them into the collections that don't include a n and the collections that do include a n. A n is just an arbitrary choice. We could just as well separate them using any other element of the set, but let's just fix a n. Doesn't matter which we choose, we'll fix a n. So let's first consider the collections of k elements from this n element set that don't include a n. Okay, so how many ways can we choose k elements from this set if we're not going to include a n? Well, we have a total of n minus 1 options, right? Because the original set has n options, but we're not going to pick a n, so we have n minus 1 other elements that we could choose. And then we just have to choose k of them. So the total number of ways we could do that is n minus 1, choose k. 
pretty straightforward. So now we have counted all of the collections of k objects from this n element set that don't include a n. Now we just have to count up the ones that do include a n. And notice, of course, we can see that we're on the right track because this is a term in our sum that we're going for. That h is really far away from the rest of the word. So now we're counting the collections that do include a n. So we fixed a n. It's already going to be in these, these collections that we're counting now. So how many other objects can we choose from? Well, we've already chosen a n, so there are again n minus 1 other objects to choose from. And we want to choose a total of k objects, because remember that we're counting the number of ways we can pick k objects from a collection of n objects. We want to pick a total of k objects. Since we've already decided we're going to include a n in these collections, we have k minus 1 choices left to make among the other n minus 1 objects in the set. So we have just counted all of the collections of size k from a set of n elements that do include this element a n that we have fixed. And that's it. We've separated this total count into the groups or the collections that do do not include a n and the ones that do include a n. So to get the total, we just add them together. And of course, that gives us precisely what we want. It's n minus 1 choose k, the collections of size k that don't include a n, plus n minus 1 choose k minus 1, the collections of size k that do include a n. And again, we've got that k minus 1 there because we have fixed this count to count the collections that do include a n. So we only have k minus 1 choices left to make. We've already determined we're going to include a n in those collections. And so that's just another way that we could count the number of ways of choosing k objects from a collection of n objects, and that proves the equality. n choose k is equal to n minus 1 choose k plus n minus 1 choose k minus 1. Pretty neat. A really simple strategy of just separating out the collections, you know, that we're trying to count, separating them into the collections that don't include some arbitrary fixed element of our set and the collections that do include this element. And then boom, we get the equality. Pretty sweet, and we can actually use this to help us prove the binomial theorem if we want to do that. So, I hope this video helped you understand the proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or if any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. If you appreciate these lessons on Wrath of Math, I'd really appreciate it if you would make a small donation on PayPal or small monthly pledge on Patreon. Leave links to those in the description. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.